Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the 212A, it's the Tier 9 Soviet SPG. It's located on the southwest spawn of Oyster Bay and it's under the command of Oxagon. Now, this is quite good because we've got an ace tanker RT player, a top of the line player who can probably tell us where the best places to go would be on this map. Game on! I noticed as he was pulling away that uh, they've got a hash bomb on their team. At least it, I think it was a hash bomb. And I found out just recently that uh, a hash bomb in uh, Polish is actually referred to as a lodówka, which is actually a fridge because the uh, because the uh, tank destroyer actually does look a bit like a fridge. If yes, if it is a fridge, then it's a very big one. And it probably puts to shame the size of the American fridges, which are uh, normally regarded as the biggest in the world. But uh, yes, the, the FB4005 as a fridge. Yeah, never thought of it that way. Okay, we just saw a tree knocked over there. So somebody is actually going around to that position. And they're probably going to try and shoot from that ledge. Although he can't get a shot from this position. He can shoot over here. And we're looking at a Fosh, styling in. Rounds out. It's a long range shot. He does 311 hit points. Now he's got the 203 millimeter howitzer, the B4 howitzer. It's capable of 900 alpha. Following the Fosh for the moment, just to see where he's gonna go next. So you'll probably want to drop another shell in on him. Okay, he's loaded. Running it up, rounds out. The guy moves through that position and oh, took a direct hit for only 187 though. You've got to remember that the uh, 212A is actually based on the original design of the KV-222, which actually makes it a KV tank, but with an RT box at the back with the engine up front. So basically it's probably a KV which has actually been reversed but has got additional armor. Now the Viz 55 takes the next shot for 299 but it was a near miss. Standard reload for this RT is 37.39 seconds. And oh looks like we're gonna go for this one which I'm trying to read. It's an AMX I think. MX 5100 or 120. Rounds out. Oh, direct hit. And it was a blind hit as well because he actually went uh, unspotted at the moment the shell went in. It was an AMX 5120, actually. He's now missing quite a few hit points, though. And there we've got a strip 103B in the usual position. In fact, he's actually been joined by a tortoise. So you could actually get two, two hits for one shot. Now, you can't hit that one. I go back to the original position because I think there's two tanks there and he can hit both of them at the same time. But he's going for the 120 and another 163 hit points. So what Oxcon's elected to do is fire from this position, which is way, it's the furthest east, uh, furthest west that you can get other than the beach in Grid Square H1. I think you get good lines of... Um, good avenues or arcs of firing from that position on the south end of the map not so much on the north end or the middle but we'll get to see it any second because he's now trying to hit this centurion 7-1 he's in a tier 10 game with tier 9 rt and oh that one hits the rock base unfortunately he wasn't able to get the centurion okay he's neglecting that he's actually now going for the corridor to try and shoot there. Obviously, I'd be very interested in putting shells on that Striv and the uh, Tortoise that's alongside him because they are obviously firing at our teammates as, we're mo as they're moving up. Only gets 16 hit points off the Panzerkampfwagen 7. But the 7 is taking damage, so he is getting stun assist. Now, this position is a really good spot to go for. 
because not only the tortoise there, but there is a strip there as well, but he just can't be spotted at the moment. And the, the 5120 just died. He took a, a round from our Heshpan, our Lodufka. I'm never going to forget that now. <laughs> In fact, actually, I was told by Oxidor that not only is the Heshpan known as the Lodufka, but in fact, the um, the Death Star, which is obviously the FB215B183 in Polish, is known as Godzilla. And that's something difficult to forget as well. <laughs> okay, Centurion is putting himself in a position where he can be here. Now, you notice how Oxcon was dialing in slightly to one side, the Centurion, but he fires in and, oh, it's going to be a bit late. Yeah. I've noticed that the tanks on the north end of the map, or on the north side of the island, tend to be a lot faster and more fluid. It's more of a medium map, whereas the avenues of approach on the south end of the map tend to favour the tank destroyers and the heavy tanks. In fact, there is, funnily enough, a Godzilla in this map. Yes, there's a, an FB215B183 on the enemy team in this game. I guess he's the match for the Heshpan or Ludovka on our team. Okay, we've got an enemy target. It's... Oh, it's a Cobra. Oh, dear. Now, yes, they had that autoloader with four shots. He can be quite dangerous, and T-30 is pulling back. He just took an RT round and did take some damage. But I think that Cobra is kind of keen to avoid losing up to 750 hit points from the T-30. And that's why he's hanging back at the moment. And there's the RT doing it again. The Cobra might decide that now's his time. Or is he going to wait? No, he's waiting because he doesn't want to get hit. And look at this. The, in comes the Progetto. And unfortunately, he's upset our aiming, and we're going to hit two at once. Rounds out. I think it's a little late, unfortunately, and the Centurion's the only one who takes damage, unfortunately. We've lost the T-30, and now we've only got one tank between us and the cap area, or between us and those three enemies. In fact, four enemies, because they've been joined by a T-110 E3. So yet again, it shows that the fluid north side of the map is a lot faster moving than the south end. And uh, there's the Centurion. We can't get a shot on him at the moment. There's something in between us and the enemy. I, mean, I think it might be uh, the wet one of the, the containers that we're near to. But we can hit the Godzilla, who's been spotted over here, the Death Star. Ramps out. That's a direct hit. In fact, that was a premium round, and it went straight through for 585 hit points. In fact, we got the rear of that Godzilla as well. And look, two of our guys have turned up at the same time, and he's still in reload. But he won't be in reload for long, and we're loading another premium round, so we could get another hit on this Godzilla. Rounds out. Another peg! 626 we lose the AE phase one but I think the leopard's gonna go after this uh, Death Star and he did get the uh, kill oh but we've just been spotted by the Progetto we just pumped one into our side it's not looking good I must say even though we're we're one tank down on the enemy they're very close and we don't know which direction they're gonna come from and in fact, now Artie's getting involved. And that was the right decision to get behind that container pile. Because, of course, it's make it very difficult for the enemy to get shots. Now, I do believe that if the enemy does actually get close, you can't go over that edge. If you go into the water, you are dead. And he's now looking at the E3. And he's got a red line, so he can't hit that guy. We can hit... No, we can't even hit that strip because this containers are in the way. 
So he's going to have to change position, and that means he's going to be vulnerable to the enemy RT, who's an FV-3805. And... We're done for. Everyone get out. The Progetto was the one who got the first shot in, and we're out the game. There's only two left on our team. And it's the Ludovka and the Leopard prototype. The Leopard's just gone. So it's now just the um, Ludovka. Yes, I know it's very funny. But I've never spoken Polish before. And now I'm getting loads of Polish words handed to me. And that's it. That's the end of the game. It's all over. Here's the end of the first battle. Yes, it's one of two. It's a second class tanker for Oxagon of Enjoy in the 212A. Unfortunately, it was a defeat, but he did get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 11 and he got a cause medal as well for doing more damage, ex exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. And his win eight from that one was 3,137. So despite the fact his teammates kind of folded, he didn't. He actually gave out a lot of damage to the enemy during that game. Let's have a look at team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in this game, but the Viz 55 on his team did. He got 4,681 hit points. Second highest damage actually went to the Ludovka, the bridge. <laughs> 4,286 went to him. And the third highest damage went to the Striv 103B on the enemy team. He got 4,206 hit points out of the game. And we can see that Oxagon managed to get the fourth highest damage on the game with 4,060. A very high score. Let's have a look at team score, the number of kills. And yes, it's Slodówka did the best with six kills. I hope I'm not butchering the Polish, by the way. Um, the Fridge did six kills. Four kills went to the Cobra on the enemy team. Yes, I did say those things are dangerous. They are dangerous. And three kills went to the Team 110 E3 on the enemy team. And I'm afraid Oxgon didn't get any kills at all. And when it came to base XP, it's the Cobra who did the best with 1,148. The only player to get over 1,000. With the Striv getting 880. And the Centurion 7-1 getting 876. We can see Oxgon got second on his team with 530. We can see that Oxgon fired 12 rounds in the game. Five direct hits on the enemy, four penetrating shots as well. And most of that was down to the premium ammo he was using on the Hesh Barn, the enemy Hesh... Uh, no, not the Hesh Barn, it was the Godzilla. Yes, it was the Death Star that it was actually firing premium rounds right through his rear and getting direct hits every time. Yes, he got four penetrations in the game. Eight splash, damage of 4,060 hit points in total, all of it at more than 300 meters. He damaged... Um, uh, he received two hits from two. That was the Progetto. Hit him twice and penetrated him twice. He damaged eight of the enemy. Didn't get any kills, but he got 1,302 hit points of stun assist of 10 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 49,970 credits for the game. 5,508 for Courageous Resistance. That's because he got a Gauze medal in a losing or drawn game. 55,478 credits altogether, and after repair, ammunition, respawn, consumables took away a loss of 3,021 credits. 795 XP for the battle, 468 for courageous resistance, took away 1,263 experience points altogether. So yes, he showed us one of the positions we can use, which is um, right down on the bottom corner of the map. Um, those containers... Whilst they do actually provide a little bit of protection, maybe from RT shells, they're not so good if the enemy tanks turn up and then they can shoot around them. Uh, and of course, yes, you have to consider them. Maybe you have to retreat. You can't go into the water, unfortunately, because you, you would drown. But uh, maybe you can retreat and go elsewhere and maybe follow the tanks to get away from the enemy, ta the enemy tanks if they turn up. So that was the end of the first battle. Let's have a look at the second one. The second replay is on the Brook Rockford map, and we're on the South Spawn. Okay, it looks like Oxcon's going to go over to the west side of the map. And we can see he's got an FB3805 as his arty buddy. We've seen very few games with three arty in them now. Um, most of the time, it's just two arty. Or just one. 
Very few games without any arty whatsoever as well. Okay, it's loaded, ready to go. And he's staying kind of central and no cover between him and the enemy. If they do have a long range spotter, he might be able to see where they are. Where he is. Rain rounds out the 50 TP. And he gets 406 hit points from his first shot. So it's quite a good, good bad new shot, that one. Yes, it's perfectly possible, you see, the light tank could suddenly turn up on the west side of the map, going down the tree line, and could spot, or get close enough, to spot an RT that's out in the open. We're looking to put a shot into the Udas, who seems to be motoring backwards and forwards in the, uh, the bowl. Rounds out. Direct hit. Yep, he obviously didn't realise that uh, Obsagon could easily get a shot at him. That 50 TP still in sight, and now an E100 turned up on the west side. But he's already taken serious damage. I think he was spotted by our Char, the Char Millie 75. It's a tier 10 game with tier 9 tanks, and it rounds out. Lands short of the 50 TP. Actually, it was a Char Future, not a Char Mini. I got that wrong. Okay, so he's changed position just in case the enemy RT is trying to work out where he is from the tracers. And an enemy tank has turned up on the hill to the east of the map. Okay, no joy in getting that 50 TP though, so... And um, we've lost sight of the... Oh no, he's come back. We, the enemy on the hill is still there. You can see the reticule drift again, drifting towards the target that it is spotted. And that's an object 277. Can you get shots? I think he can. Looks good. Rounds out and... Well, it landed short yet again, but he did pick up 121 hit points and he's changing position. That 50 TP came back into sight for a brief moment, but that 277 looks a much tastier target. He's the only one we've seen up there so far. And that could give our guys a bit of encouragement. Rounds out, looks good. Still landed short, but he did get some hit points. 184 this time. Almost loaded. Standard reload, 37.39 seconds. And we can see that uh, oxcon has got 28.06. I'm starting to wonder if he's actually got the uh, top gun or if he's got the stock gun. Yes, he has got the top gun. 900 alpha, 52 millimeters of pen. But he's got a very fast reload. He's knocked nearly nine seconds off the reload. And there's a tracer from the RT. So the obviously place for the enemy RT is obviously over in grid square A1 or A2. And he's just wounded that Udes. I think the tracer indicated that the enemy shell was after our E75. But it looks like he missed it. Okay, we've got two two double sevens now up on the hill. Again, we're going for the Udis because he's a lightly armoured vehicle. Reliance on his armour to... Uh, oh, his angling of his armour. Oh, and another 152 hit points off him. Yes, the enemy RT is after our E75. He's showing stun and he's lost three quarters of his hit points. And unfortunately, the 277 up on the hill just got a kill shot. Okay, so those 277s are definitely a good target to aim for because they are killing our tanks down in the field. Rounds out. He pulls back, but he takes the direct hit. This time the shell went long and he got an impact at 272 hit points. Actually, Oxagon's doing a good job with changing position, 
every time. Even though he's out in the open, I don't think there's any threat. I think he's got it right. Rounds out. It goes long this time and zooms right over the top of the 277, but our teammate in the FB3805 does get a direct hit. He's not moving every chance. He's just moving every now and then to make the uh, enemy RT avoid the counter battery because they can't pin him down and they haven't tried yet. I think they're more interested in our tanks. I've lost sight of the 277, but there he is. He's moving back and rounds out. Direct hit. Good shot. 463 hit points. It went into the side of the vehicle. And now he's down to about a quarter of his hit points left. Two more shots like that, and he's out the game. The other object, 277, has gone down to the village. Okay, we're lined up on where he was last seen. Oh! And it looks like our FB3805 just got a direct hit. And he was in that spot. And now he's moved because he's knocked the tree down as he went. Okay, up on top of the hill now is the TVP T5051. You may have seen a video featuring this tank. Uh, not this specific one, but featuring this type of tank recently on our channel. They are an assassin tank. A bit like the Batchat 25 ton, really in that they can wipe out enemy tanks with one magazine. The Udis just came up to the center line again, just for a quick run by. And that object true 277 has decided he's going to sneak through and get in through the dip. Okay, so this is our opportunity because he's trapped in there now. He has to come out the south end and we can put around through him here. Well, it landed in the water right next door to him, but he now has to move and move to the west because there's a char few two four coming down the railway line on the other side of the embankment. And with the 277 in the dip, he has to seek cover from the trees just in case the char few two four gets close enough to actually spot him. He can pop up onto the embankment rise right next door to the railway wagons and he might spot a tank that's near enough by or an arty. There's the Char Future 4. He can't get a shot in there. We can't see where the 277 in the dip is, but we can certainly see this one up on top of the hill. Line him up. Round cell. Oh, he decided. Oh, he has fired. And he gets a direct hit. slightly backing up. The Char Future 4 can't get too close to our Conqueror or the E5 because if they do then these guys might decide to come over the hill and do some damage to them. And they just lost their 277 to the FB3805 who just fired and it took a huge amount of time for the shell to arrive but when it did the 277 was out of the game which means that Oxagon did get a good hit the last time round. So I did say two hits and that guy would be out the game. And it was two hits. He was out the game. Okay, we can't see the Char Future 4. It looks like he got wiped out. Looks like we also lost our last remaining tank on the hill. And it's a good job we're now down in the bushes because the 277s turned up at the embankment, rounds out. It lands on the embankment. So we're being compressed into this corner of the map now. The enemy, the enemy's only two tanks up on us in this game, but they have managed to push us all the way down here. And now we can see a Jaegeru up in the north. Suddenly became visible to the Char Future 4. Almost ready to go. Let it settle. That's it. Round south. Direct hit. 486. We're now up to 
nearly 2,500 hit points. Remember, there's some blind shots in there as well where we got direct hits, but we never saw how many hit points we got. And that's the FP3805. Now, we've lost any tanks that were near the railway line, though. And that included a Conqueror, I believe, who was down there. Oh, direct hit! Another one. Now, notice how he quickly changed position laterally, just a little bit. Because, of course, some people have actually worked out how to return fire when they get hit by tanks which are further down that uh, row of, of the uh, hedgerow. I think Skill was the one who showed people how to do it, and it was having some pretty devastating effects on our guys, or on tanks in the south. Now he's holding the aim where he thinks the TVP T5051 is going to appear, and I think he'll probably be just behind that burning wagon, using it for cover. Yes, I think the enemy is fairly reluctant to cross the railway line. If they are going to do that, then it's very likely the 277 or the TVP will go as far south along the railway embankment and try and hop over the line where we can't be seen. And I think that's exactly what the 277 has just done. He's popped up onto the railway line at the base, right down at the bottom. And in the north, a Conway suddenly appeared. He's taking fire. And the Bat Chat 25 TAP, which is the tier 9 version. Rounds out. Direct hit. Good one. 495. Brings us up to just shy of 2,900 hit points. Now, the Bat Chat selected to go into that bowl area, but that doesn't take him out of the spotting capability of the char future four who's up on the bank at the west side of the map he should still be able to see that uh, bat chat 25t when he gets close to the edge of the bowl two minutes to go even though the enemy's four tanks up on us at the moment oh now one of them's making a suicide run it's the tvp which is not a good idea for him and unfortunately we're having difficulty getting a solution oh he got a snapshot in there for 527 hit points. And he's changing position because that was an enemy arty shell inbound. He needed to make sure that he changed position just in case he did get spotted. Thankfully, the TVP got wiped out very quickly. And now Oxcon's up to 3,000, just under 3,400. He's loaded, ready to go again. And there's that batch at 25 TAP. He's gone. Okay, and somebody's capping in our cap, but didn't stay in it for long. And that kind of makes me think that they're on the move. Okay, 50 TP. They're trying to finish this game with only one minute left to go. Rounds out. Direct hit. 335 from that one. There's a Gorilla 15 right up on the center line. I think we can get one more round in on the enemy before this game is over. And the Conway is dashing south as fast as he dare, trying to spot our guys. They are capping, but it's too late to cap now. Way too late. We're trying to get a shot. In. We fire blind on that uh, Conway. There's only four left on our team. We need to get behind some cover. The Conway got very close, but didn't spot us. The Conway's gone. The 268 got him. And we have been spotted. That's the enemy RT. We're done for. Everyone get out. In fact, we got a hit from two different directions at the same time, but it is a draw. And that's the end of the game. Well, that was desperately close at the end of the game. 
It was a second-class tanker for Oxagon in the 212A. He got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 11. And he got a gauze medal as well for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. His win rate was 3,905, which is Super Unicum standard. And it was almost a loss, but uh, luckily they still had some alive at the end. I think Oxagon got to let down by the sheer size of the 212A there at the end of the game. It is quite a big RT in terms of the, that huge casemate on the, uh, the um, KB220 hull. It is so big that the 277, who was actually to the east of us, actually spotted us through the trees and uh, then, obviously, the RT rounds came in from above. They must have been waiting, knowing full well where we were. They, I think they uh, were certainly trying to get that FB3805 as well. Let's have a look at team score and see where he was. Oh, my gum, look at the damage. Well, the Gorilla 15 on the enemy team managed 5,242 hit points, but he didn't get the high caliber because it wasn't 20% of the enemy hit pool. And Oxcon got the second highest damage in that game with 4,973 hit points. And he got a gauze medal out of it, so at least he gets the medal and that compensates him for it being a draw. In third place on damage was the Object 277, the one that spotted us through the trees. He got 3,508 hit points of damage. And uh, we can see that the enemy RT at the end of that game, yes, there was two of them. Their M53, M55, 3,356, he picked up a Confederate. And their other RT was the FB3805, he got 1,959. So, yes, both of their RTs were working quite hard, but not as hard as Oxcon was working. He really did work hard. And his mate in the FB3805 did survive, but he didn't get much in the way of hit points. Maybe he just wasn't as much practice as Oxcon had. When it came to kills, it was the 277 and the 50 TP on the enemy team. Managed to get three kills apiece. Two kills apiece went to the Char Future 4 and the Object 268 on our team. And also to the Greta 15 and the Jaeger on the enemy team. And I'm afraid Oxcon didn't get a single kill in the game. But he did hit a large number of the enemy tanks. And when it came to base XP, it's the enemy team came out on top with the 50 TP getting 669. In second place, we've got their Object 277, the one that spotted us through the trees. He got 565. And in third place, the next highest was the M53, M55 on the enemy team, who managed 564. So they had several players who were very close together. But uh, obviously, um, Oxcon did very well indeed, getting a higher amount of damage than the others. I just don't think he got as much stun assist as this M53 did. Yes, I'm um, looking at that. He got some stun assist out of there and of course he got the confederate medal um but of course as we know oxagon got that gauze medal because he did so much damage in the game so let's have a look at detail he fired 21 rounds so he was very very active in that game that's a high score making use of every second that he had to pump the rounds out he still had nine rounds left after the end of the game in fact um the 212a actually carries not nine rounds it's um 19 rounds because the 212A can carry 40 rounds of ammunition with the uh, 203 millimeter howitzer. He also damaged nine of the enemy, didn't get any kills, but he did get 19 splashes as well. 4,973 hit points of damage, of which 4,446 were at more than 300 meters. So he did get some damage at fairly close range. Two hits received. One was penetration, one was a hit by way of splash. Yes, that was the shot that uh, came in. I think it was the 277 who got the kill shot, but the enemy RT did manage to uh, rip away most of our hit points before the 277 finished us off. I think it was the 277. I just checked that to make absolutely certain. It was Madaras was the name of the player who got the kill. And Madaras is, yes, the 277. It was him. The guy poking through the trees, he could see Oxagon and got the kill shot in just after the RT hit us. So, um, eight enemy vehicles were damaged, none were killed, and 348 hit points of stun assist. Yes, we didn't get as much stun assist as the M53, M55 did. He got slightly more. And that 348 hit points of stun was only off nine stuns. He earned 48,137 credits from the battle, 
5,508 from the Courageous Resistance, 53,645 credits altogether. But after repair, ammunition, resupply, and consumables, he actually made a loss of 24,782 credits for the game. 757 XP, 447 for Courageous Resistance, took away 1,204 experience points altogether. So two different battles. One's a draw, and of course, Oxcon benefited from getting the Gauds Medal. And of course, the previous game was on Ox uh, Oyster Bay, and we got to see how he got an, um, a Gauds Medal on that one as well. Uh, slightly different circumstances. Obviously, I think we're still learning about the Oyster Bay map, and it's going to take us a little while to figure out where the best firing positions are, but I'm sure that we will get to learn them eventually. I hope you enjoyed both of those replays. If you did, please give the video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm, and thank you for watching.